so ma'am with your permissions with all the doctor's permission can we start today's session here yes please Good evening and welcome to one and all presenting in this session. I am Sneha from Clernet. Clernet is very proud to be a part of this webinar as a digital partner. Now I would like to play a short video of Clernet. Thank you so much all for your patience. Clernet is India's largest live digital CME and doctors generated medical content platform. Our website is www.clernet.com. We will invite all the doctors to visit our website. So without further delay, I would like to take this handover to this session to Dr. Nehil Patil, ma'am. Kindly proceed. Over to you. Thank you so much, Sneha. And thank you, Clernet, for providing this platform for the PG teaching. I welcome you all for our e-Gurukul Patshala, the PG clinic, which is well uh, accepted and it is well recognized by all the PGs all over the India. Today, we have a case discussion on central nervous system. And for this, my another colleague, uh, Dr. Aarti Kinikar, madam, is going to moderate the session. So I'm giving this session to uh, this platform to the ma'am. Ma'am, it's all yours. Yes. Thank you, Nehal. Uh, th thank you, Sneha. And we, uh, I welcome uh, all of you who are there in the faculty room as well as who are live and watching this particular session. Uh, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce today's participants as well as the uh, specialists who are going to assist uh, us in learning new things in neurology. So today's presenter, as you know, uh, is Dr. Riya Singh. She is a final year student of the PG Institute of YCM, which is in Pimpri Chinswar. And she is a third year, final year MD student. To mentor her, we have today Dr. Surya Khan, who is associate professor in the same institute and uh, who has worked with her uh, to make this presentation for us today. And this department of pediatrics is uh, headed by Dr. Deepali Ambike, Madam, who is professor and head of pediatrics at this newly established uh, postgraduate institute. Now to help uh, Ria uh, uh, come to a final diagnosis and give us more inputs on recent advances or approaches to a neurology case, we have two young experts here. And I'm also waiting to learn something from them new. So first I will uh, introduce Dr. Vishwanath uh, Pulkarni. He has done his MD pediatrics from uh, INHS Ashwini, Mumbai. He is an ex-surgeon lieutenant commander in the Indian Navy, and he has shifted from there into the field of uh, private uh, pediatric practice here. He has done his IOP fellowship in pediatric neurology and epilepsy. And he is uh, also the founder secretary of the Maharashtra chapter of AOPN. Uh, he is working as a consultant pediatric neurologist and a epilepsy specialist. He is attached to D.Y. Patil Medical College, which is situated in uh, in Chinchwar. He is also attached as a consultant to Aditya Birla Hospital, Surya Hospital, and his own clinic, which is in a Pimpri Chinswad area. He has publications to his credit and is also a recipient of the Junior Research Award uh, of ICN Conference, which was held in Turkey. So I welcome you, Dr. Vishwanath, and I hope you will also enjoy interacting with us as well as Ria. Uh, Thank you, Next, we have Dr. Raghavendra Swami. He is from Karnataka, but his education is all from Mumbai at KM uh, Hospital, both MBBS and his post-graduation. Presently, he is working as uh, assistant professor in pediatrics at Kim's Hubli. 
and his area of interest is predominantly pediatric epilepsy and has done his pediatric neurology fellowship from IGICH Bengaluru. Uh, he has publications to his credit for his research work as well as oral presentations at various uh, conferences. So I welcome Dr. Raghavendra and I hope uh, you will uh, guide our students and also the people watching this particular session so that the PGs are confident of their long case in neurology, which is for the exams. But I think when they start practice also, they are going to remember your session, which you will conduct today. So I will hand it over to Ria thank now. You, thank you. Yeah. And uh, best luck to your presentation. It is just an interaction and not an exam, Priya. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right. Thank you. You can put it on the full screen, Ria. Yeah. Uh, good evening, all my seniors. Yeah, we can see your screen. Yes, ma'am. Um, my case is 11-year boy, born of third degree consanguinous marriage, resident of Nanded, Maharashtra, Hindu by religion, informant being grandmother, who is fairly reliable, was admitted on... 13th of March 2023 with chief complaints of not able to walk for eight months, loss of control over passing urine and stool for eight months, wound over back for two months and fever for four days. The patient is having significant past history, but I will start with presenting complaints at present. The child was apparently all right eight months back when he had fever for one day, which was sudden in onset, single episode, high grade without any chills or rigor and relieved on medication. He also had weakness, which was in both legs, sudden and onset uh, on the same day of fever, equal on both sides. It was painless and it increased over two days. Initially, the child complained of tingling sensation in both legs, but later he was not able to walk and gradually he was not able to uh, sit uh, from lying down position involving the trunk and was not able to lift his hand above the head involving his upper limb by day seven of the illness. Child was not able to speak, but was conscious and oriented and was able to understand the spoken language. There was no difficulty in swallowing and breathing. And it was also noted that there was some loss of sensation over lower part of the body. The child was admitted to a hospital on day eight of illness where he received some costly drug for five days. The child started recovering he regained his normal speech on second day of medication and movement of both upper limb on third day. Child was discharged on sixth day with some residual paralysis of both lower limbs. There was difficulty in passing urine. Uh, this, during this episode, child did not have any control over urine. He was not able to initiate the flow of urine. Thus, he was catheterized and post catheter removal, there was continuous dribbling of urine. He does not recognize fullness of the bladder at present also. He also had complaints of constipation with passage of heart stools after enema, but no sensation or pain during the passage of stool. For the next four months, there was no improvement in child's condition. So he was readmitted to a pri private hospital where he received another costly injection once every week for four weeks. Still, there was no improvement. So they took discharge against medical advice. The patient was admitted to our hospital 25 days back with complaints of multiple wounds at the lower back and both thighs, which started two months back with pus discharge for five days, fever uh, and fever for four days. Course during the hospital stay, child was started on some IV medication and daily dressing over the wounds and fever resolved over two days of medication. But on third day, the child started complaining of blurring of vision in both eyes, left more involved than right. It was sudden in onset, progressive and painless. On eighth day of admission, the child started having abnormal posturing, which was sudden in onset with tightening and jerky movements of all four limbs with uprolling of eyes, which was not associated with fever and not responding to any medication. Child was taken on ventilator. 
tightening stopped after four to five types of multiple IV injections. Child regained consciousness after two days. There was no repeat abdo abnormal posturing present since then, and he was extubated after four days. There was no history of vomiting, headache, no history of crash, no history of loss of smell or taste sensation, no history of difficulty in swallowing or hoarseness of voice, no difficulty in speech. There is no his uh, history of abnormal eye movement or double vision, no history of deviation of mouth or drooling of saliva. There is no history of hearing loss, no history of travel or trauma. No history of any drug intake and recent vaccination. There was no history of any previous conversion episodes. Past history. The child had his first episode of weakness four years back, which involved left side of the body, both upper limb and lower limb. It was sudden and onset and child was, um, child was initially able to move the limbs, but not able to stand or walk or lift hand above shoulder on left side. He was admitted and treated after which he recovered completely within five to seven days and was discharged on some medication for six months. The child was completely normal after this episode for one year. He again had a high grade fever for one day followed by sudden weakness involving both lower limbs and left upper limb with loss of sensation in lower part of the body without any bowel and bladder involvement. He gradually improved over two to three months without any residual illness. In the first episode, the child recovered rapidly, but after the second episode, the recovery was slow. Family history. There is no significant family history. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You want to stop here because it's a very long, many things yes, happening in the history. So I would request you like how to, what all things are going on your, in your mind up till now. And then Dr. Vishwanath and Dr. Ved. Raghavendra can uh, take over with. If you can just uh, say what is what is it you are thinking about in this case? Uh, Ma'am, this child, uh, eleven year male child, he is having uh, recurrent episodes of loss of uh, power, that is weakness, involving different areas of the body. In this episode, which started eight months back, uh, he was complaining of progressive loss of power from toes to um, upper limbs and which resolved after which recovered after some medication but it is not fully recovered still the child is having a uh, loss of power in both lower limbs but previously when the child had similar episodes four month uh, four year back and one episode three year back at that time child completely recovered from these um, illnesses uh, this weakness so um, this for, uh, for this condition, the etiology that we can think of is something that is acute in onset and which is recurrent. So um, I'm most probably thinking that it could be, um, in, um, it can fit into autoimmune causes, inflammatory diseases and autoimmune diseases. See, the, I think there are three or four episodes of admission to the hospital and three or four episodes of uh, acute worsening uh, in the form of weakness, but with improvement. Yes, sir. And the improvement is taking over a period of time. Uh, and the initial improvement was almost complete. So it is a repetitive process and it is a uh, uh, acute onset uh, event. So <clears throat> uh, why don't you think that, see, such traumatic improvement after some medication, even uh, any edema, present in say some tuberculoma or NCC, which is common in our country, can also have such presentation initially. And it is a very focal in nature. That is one side. So why you are thinking of purely uh, autoimmune condition? Sir, uh, if it is a tuberculoma or neurocysticercosis uh, with focal lesions, then sir, it should not present with different uh, localization every time. Like first time it was only half of the body. Second time, it was involving both lower limbs and one half of the body. And this time, it started with only lower limbs. So it is presenting with different, uh, like clinical presentations are different every time. Also, sir, uh, there's no history of weight loss or chronic fever, sir. And no history of seizures also. Tuberculoma and uh, NCC, we will have seizures initially. Okay. Where do you think is the uh, immune mediated response which is going on in the brain? Where is the lesion? Yeah, so, you, you um, should, Ria, Dr. Ria, just a minute, just a minute. I will intrude over here. Now, first of all, 
say everything, all your etiology, all, all your say uh, symptomatology, it has started since the age of four years. Now the child is eight years, correct? No, sir. Uh, started at around nine years. Now nine. he's 11 years. Uh, eight, 11. Eight, eight years and now 11 years. Yeah, eight years and 11 years, correct? The symptoms yes, started at the age of eight years. So it is quite chronic one. So first is the localization, onset, duration and progress. So now are you thinking these four episodes are of, of the same etiology, different etiology, localization? Localization is very important. Where you want to localize, whether you want to localize into the say uh, LMN, UMN, in this side, in the call. Where you want to localize? Uh, sir, complete loss of power is there. Uh, it is more likely of lower motor neuron rather than upper motor neurons. Correct. So it is lower motor neuron. Where in lower motor neuron, whether it has muscle, myoneural junction, nerve, anterior muscle, where? Uh, sir, for muscle, uh, there is sensory loss as well. So neuro, uh, neuromuscular junction and muscle is less likely. For nerve, uh, only nerve, sir, it can be, but there is no pain, uh, history of pain that child started. In generally... Uh, He's having sensory involvement. No? He's having sensory yes, involvement. Sir. He's having big, you know, wounds. So that gives me some hint that his sensory system is also involved. Yes, sir. Uh, nerve can be there, sir. Nerve. And uh, anterior horn cell involvement can also be present, sir. What of a spinal cord? Um, sir, spinal cord from anterior horn cell, uh, it will be neuro uh, lower motor neuron illness. And uh, above that, it will present like upper motor neuron. Yeah. Lower, yes, say anterior, when you talk about anterior horn cell, it is like motor. Now, here we are talking about sensory mm -hmm. as well as motor. So, it is very really likely the child is having anterior horn affection, correct? So anterior horn cell affection, always remember two things in your mind. If it is congenital, it's SMA. And if it is say acquired, it's your polio or polio-like illnesses, like acute flaccid myelitis, correct? Now in this child, there is sensory system involvement from the history. Now what we are gathering, so just start, say, from the age of eight years, the child had one episode of weakness. Then he, you know, uh, recovered from that. Then again, after one year, he had second episode of illness. He recovered. And now again, he is having, uh, say, weakness. He is having bowel bladder involvement. Now, who would like to consider this is, say, peripheral nerve or whether this is, say, GBS and then the, the CIDP, chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathies? Uh, sir, for GBS, uh, bowel and bladder involvement is transient and it should not be persistent till now. Sure. And, uh, sir, chronic inflammatory demyelin uh, demyelinating disease is a possibility, sir. No, here Dr. Uh, Swami sir has asked one thing very uh, categorically. Do you think whether there is any affection of the cord itself? Bowel bladder involvement is there. Yes, sir, it is possible. The system is involvement is there. Correct? Yes, sir. And till now, now one more history that you say neuroaxis, you talk that there is no involvement of your midbrain, correct? Yes, but sir. Vision loss also. Sir, vision is uh, that is a recent history, uh, like around uh, 10, 20 days back, sir. Initially, it was not there, but now it is there. So now would you like to modify or would you like to again give us a good set of differential from this history? Uh, sir, now the involvement is sir patchy involvement. It is involving lower motor neurons as well, uh, like lower motor neuron type of palsy. Uh, it could it uh, spinal cord also and vision loss. Uh, then it can be in uh, brain also, like optic nerve is being affected. So uh, now um, it is more like of a patchy involvement. Okay, so you talk something about autoimmune and so what about say when I start with the history, I always listen. I am very much important is the consanguinity. You told it is the product of third degree, is born by third degree consanguinous marriage, correct? Yes, sir. Now here you would like not like to envisage some kind of metabolic disorders or genetic disorders. Say, I, I will think melas. I will think it is mitochondria. Sir, uh, for melas, sir, uh, then it, it should involve other uh, body organs also, like um, cardiac abnormality will be there. Uh, liver uh, abnormalities should be there. Uh, so it, it is less likely, sir. And seizures, seizures, you know. Yes, sir, seizures. And seizures are a very predominant factor. Okay. No, so one more. Would you like to add something? 
sir one more she is to she gave that some posturing was there for four days what do you think uh, ria are the are those episodes sir uh, this could be a progressive disease initially involving a uh, white matter but now progressing to involving a uh, cortical matter uh, gray matter no, there are seizures there are seizures yes sir seizures yes sir okay what made you think those posturing events were seizure because uh, whenever you told uh, if they are cortical involvement in raised icp they can be posturing because of raised icp also yes sir and how do how are you sure that it is there convulsions on you sir uh, the history what uh, they are describing is uh, proper tonic clonic posturing uh, with uprolling of eyes and okay. drooling of saliva uh, so frothing from mouth so it is most likely sir it was convulsion for which the child was intubated also okay so now now you want to localize now again okay we will localize again correct now it's the cortical involvement the child had seizures correct yes, sir so you also gave us know that the child might be having say optic nerve involvement yes sir the child, there is now vision loss now again now we are sure that now he is having cord involvement or say peripheral nerve involvement uh, sir only for upper motor neuron uh, paralysis the presentation is not uh, like the weakness what they are describing is complete weakness without any movement and it is uh, not upper motor uh, like they will that we will see in like examination sir correct, but correct, correct. that will oh, be in examination correct. you are absolutely right but would you like to consider that could be say cord lesion uh, there is likely to be cord lesion boil blood involvement is there say so sensory system is also involved yes, now people things are coming up correct so now would you like to consider cord also one of the you know uh, localizing region sir uh, cord initially it might be like in cord but now it is in brain also so it is progressing uh, in at present according to the history till now okay the way, the very fact that now cortical involvement is there and uh, previous episodes uh, are element type so rather than considering peripheral nerves i would go in favor of spinal cord involvement yes sir okay and spinal cord can have both human manifestation also and, and element manifestation yes. also and very more so over motor sensory and autonomic all together probably uh, thoracolumbar spine was also involved uh, this is what we perceive okay how do you explain the first episode of hemiplegia left side hemiplegia it is first one from where the child recovered uh ma'am it is 4 years back the complete details of the history is not available but according to what we can get it was involvement of left side of the body and uh, it was sudden in onset for which they took it uh, took the child to uh, hospital where some injection and some treatment was given and child was completely okay after 5 uh, to 7 days so um, it is uh, some disease which which recovered completely so um, such diseases with acute onset and complete recovery mam belongs more towards inflammatory diseases or uh, involving spinal cord mam spinal cord level so you are telling complete left hemiparesis so where do you think in the spinal cord that lesion can cause complete left hemiparesis uh Yes, sir uh, it will not be in uh, spinal cord it can be in cortex also sir in uh, cortex yeah. uh, subcortic uh, radiations cortical radiation they they will cause uh, hemiparesis so such significant can be either in internal capsule or in the midbrain yes, huh. for internal capsule uh, sir the hemi there should be hemiplegia and not paresis sir matlab it will be dense uh, hemiplegia okay um, and uh, sir no other history was available for uh, cranial nerve involvement so um, not sure for mid brain sir so it is a quite a very lengthy involvement uh, the whole left upper limb lower limb to be involved in spinal cord such extensive involvement uh, i don't know okay is it like any stroke any ischemia any thrombus you know the recovery is within a week with no residual damage isn't it so oh, which are the conditions uh, which come like this he is a 8 year old boy isn't it yes ma'am 
मैम देर कुड बी वैस्क्यूलर कॉजेस लाइक वैस्क्यूलाइटिस और देन अदर कॉजेस इन्फेक्टिव कॉजेस कैन ऑल्सो कम लाइक दिस एंड रिकवर बट प्रेजेंटिक लाइक हेमीपेरिस नॉट श्योर मैम बट अदर कंडीशन लाइक ऑटो इम्यून डिजीजेस कैन प्रेजेंट लाइक दिस uh infections like uh, chronic infections like hiv and uh, syphilis can uh, cause uh, such issues um anything which any infection which causes an arthritis um not sure ma'am no. not sure no ma'am no. Uh, Dr. Raghavendra had asked you in the beginning. First only, he said, "Why is it not a okay?" Um, and um, neurocystis arthritis and tuberculosis and TB. Okay, you can get tuberculous arthritis also, but uh, you have to have plus and minus points without treatment going on for last four years. So you want to put it as multiple conditions or one condition which is progressing. Oh, in neurology case you should know first thing is it a progressive disorder a static one or it is a recurring one which is happening so from all your history what does it look like is it ma'am um, it looks like recur uh, recurring but now progressive now progressive because mm -hmm. after the first episode the child has never been normal after the second episode he was sent home with some residual problems uh, no um, no ma'am actually first episode after first episode he was completely normal for one year second, second episode after second episode he again recovered but uh, after 2 to 3 months he took more time to recover but yes. he again recovered completely and then the third episode it is not recovering and more complications isn't it yes ma'am okay so you have to keep that in mind that is it a congenital one or an acquired problem of what etiology and more and more parts of the body are getting involved more and more parts of the neurological system are getting so bowel bladder eyes everything has got involved isn't it yes, so when we come later on to finding the pathology and etiology you will have to keep in mind it's you very rightly said it is patchy okay it is patchy that those all these words are important uh, for us to come to a neurological diagnosis okay so you have mentioned many times that expensive injections were given yes so one they have been given isn't it so what are these expensive injections um ma'am first time when the child had this uh, complaints um he was given a costly injection for 5 days so uh, it could be iv ig ma'am or it could be a uh, pulse dose of methylprednisolone okay so we have got some parts of your uh, history over here and also bowel bladder involvement which is there visual involvement any hearing involvement is there over the period of time no ma'am not yet not yet and what could be the causes of these multiple ulcers which you think from your history we have not yet examined nothing ma'am uh, since a child is paralyzed and he is not able to move uh, then these could be ma'am pressure ulcers or uh, blood sores okay and what are the risk factors for those ulcers with your history which you have taken Uh, ma'am since last 8 months the child is not able to lift his uh, limbs and or turn also so there is trunkal involvement also lower part uh, so he most of the time he is sitting or lying down uh, so that may be the reason because uh, because of the pressure because uh, there is no change in position uh, the child is getting these ulcers is it only positional or your history uh, says uh, yes ma'am uh, there is sensory loss also so the child is not able to uh, know that there are ulcers he is not having that pain okay. okay keep that all in mind i think uh, with whatever analysis you have done and inputs from both the experts uh, if i ask you that can you just sum up uh, not the whole history again but the possibility of the
type of the problem, the pathological issues which are there, the anatomical involvement which is there, is there any sequelae, and what is your most likely problem? Just in two lines or three lines, then we can move forward with the further part of the history. Uh, ma'am, according to the history, onset is a uh, chronic, ma'am. Now, uh, etiology may uh, it is uh, most likely autoimmune or inflammatory. Uh, then it uh, localization. Uh, it is patchy localization, ma'am. Initially, lo um, maybe so, uh, spinal cord and now brain also. Uh, then complications. Uh, the child is having pressure ulcers and bowel and bladder involvement. Uh, so this is the summary till now, ma'am. Okay. Both the experts want to add anything only at this stage. Otherwise, she can go forward. Madam, rather than uh, onset as chronic, I would take it as acute onset. Each episode is different. And uh, episodes are recurrent and patchy involvement. And with some residue at the end of the treatment. Some residue is being left out. Dr. Vishwanath. Yeah. Uh, ma now again, third degree consanguinity, and as you correctly pointed out, the episode of hemiparesis. Now again, we cannot rule out melas and mitochondrial at this point of time. We have to consider, say, don't only get glued to the autoimmune. Mm. Don't get glued, just autoimmune and auto. No, think about others also. Whether I am dealing with metabolic, neurometabolic, whether I am dealing with neurogenity, he's having four episodes: partial recovery, complete recovery. Multiple parts of the neuroxis they are being involved. We are saying now want to localize at where well, okay, this must be uh, this must be caught because there is loss of sensations, loss of power, boil bladder involvement. In the first or second episode, he had loss of sensations, as you uh, mentioned in the history, correct? And now it is the cortex is involved. Now it is the optic nerves are involved. Now multiple uh, involvements in the neuroaxis with say third degree consanguinity. So your differential should be more. Keep your differential diagnosis a very wide base. Do not get glued only autoimmune. Okay, that's it. Uh, so I wanted to ask for metabolic diseases um, or any neurodegenerative kind of disease, sir. Then uh, there will not be complete recovery. Like it will be slowly progressive from the first episode itself. Correct, correct. You are correct. You are absolutely right. Keeping differential in mind, we are. I am just you know asking you questions to fend it. You are supposed to fend those. You are defending very nice, fantastic. <laughs> okay, asking questions and why not? Why not neurodegenerative? Why not metabolic? And why, why only immune? So we are just say increasing your thought process. We are not getting glued to any of the diagnosis. No, we are important. We are interested in the approach. How you are approaching a particular case. I didn't hear a word called demyelination from you, Ria. Can you explain what these demyelination disorders are and whether your history you have taken very well, no doubt about it, but uh, what are the peculiar features of a demyelinating disorder? Uh, Ma'am, for demyelinating disorder, it is, uh, these are the disorders after uh, like proper myelin formation is there and later at some age, the myelin sheath uh, starts degenerating. There is, uh, it can be um, like post infectious, there is trigger or uh, it could be autoimmune itself. Uh, so some of the demyelinating disorders are uh, like multiple sclerosis, uh, then Adams and uh, neuromyelitis optica. Uh, this, this is a possibility in this case, ma'am, because uh, for demyelinating disease, there should be uh, different like uh, presentation should be at different time and involving different areas so um it fits into this patient then yes ma'am it could be no yes, so what we want you to learn from here is don't go by that word because we heard more autoimmune word from you than anything else, okay so yes. widen it what dr agavendra sir said if there is a focal deficit Think about a focal problem. The first episode may be related to that. The second one could be related to your spinal cord. The third one is uh, progressing and it is now gone to the brain convulsions, so patchy involvement. So what we need is degeneration. Is it demyelination? Is it infective? So if you put it together uh, one by one, 
uh, an acquired problem in a healthy, normal child, except for the consanguinity, no other risk factors. And then you had a febrile episode and then had hemiparesis recovering. So Dr. Raghavendra said that uh, it could be in neurology edema, the edema which recovers very fast without any residual problems. Then you are having it recurrent, patchy, all organs in the body, neuro axis, they're all getting involved. Some are recovering, some they have a sequelae. So these words are important for you to gather. Yes. Okay. So if you want to go ahead, if there are no questions from both the experts, then we can go ahead. There is, there is only one input. Yes, yes. please. Ria, always yes. vitamin D is very important. Yes. Sir. You know vitamin D? Yes, sir. What is vitamin D? Sir, colic alciferol. Um... No, no, no. It is a mnemonic. It is a mnemonic. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. uh, that is for etiology, sir. Correct, correct, correct. B is for vascular. Correct. I is infectious. Correct. E is tumor or trauma. Uh, M tumor, is for trauma, metabolic. Toxin, toxin. Toxins. Yeah. M is for metabolic diseases. Correct. Um, again, I. Is... You're inflammatory. inflammatory. Is hydrogenic. N is nutritional. And yeah. S is. Uh, okay, inflammatory. And S is syndromic, sir. And D for drugs. Okay. So you have to, when you deal with the etiology, you have to always consider vitamin D. So two axes are very important. One is your anatomical localization, one is the etiology. Etiology gives much uh, more, you know, weightage when you are prognosticating a particular child. Okay. That's it from my side. You are going to tell us about family history afterwards or yes, it is, okay. All right. Environmental, family. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Family history, there's no history of similar illness in the family, no history of any major illness in the family. Uh, birth history, antenatal history, mother was registered and immunized, no history of fever, rash, any other drug intake during pregnancy. Uh, birth was full term, vaginal delivery, cried immediately after birth. Child was 3.5 kg without any NICU stay. Developmental history, child attained all the milestones as per age and was completely normal till 9 years of age. He, was, he had good scholastic performance till then. Immunization, he was completely immunized uh, up to five years of age. Diet history, uh, child consumed 17, uh, 1760 kilocalories per day for expected of 21, uh, 2160 kilocalories per day, giving deficit of 400 grams. Protein intake is 35 grams uh, for expected of 45 grams, giving deficit of 10 grams. Um, socioeconomic history, according to modified uh, Kupu Swami uh, scale, the family belongs to lower middle class. Summary. Can I yes. ask you two questions in the family history? Yes, are they from rural area or they are migratory uh, family from somewhere else? Uh, Ma'am, they are from Nanded. So it is a uh, city where they are living. So environmental, any toxins exposure is there in those parts? Um, they have been staying in Pune for how long or they have just moved to Pune? Ma'am, they are staying in Pune for around eight to nine months. Uh, no, ma'am, uh, six months, around six months. Only six months. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you need to know your geography and the environmental factors which may be responsible for a neurological disorder. Okay, so the address is very important uh, over here. Hmm? Nobody else in the family has? No, ma'am. Okay. Now, suppose you have a child who has got this type of weakness. In the diet, what is important? Not just calories and proteins. He's coming from Nanded. He's got this thing. So whenever you have a child with weakness, hemiplegia, paresis and all, what do you ask them uh, like in detail? Uh, Ma'am, if the child was able to swallow uh, like... Uh, uh, Coordination and uh, articulation. In the diet history. Diet history. Diet history. Mixed diet is there or not? Non veg, uh, is he consuming or not? Um, what else? Any food item is related to weakness? Uh, uh, Latherism, uh, there is one. Um, Latherist, uh, Kesari dal, um, mm. 
consumption of that um, dal can lead to weakness in lower limbs so that which part of india it is more common or uh, north um, ma'am it is more common so you need to know what are consumptions of any food which are associated like this are they from a farming community uh, yes ma'am actually father was uh, initially a farmer but uh, because of the illness they when they moved here now the father is doing clerk job over here which toxins in the farm can affect a child over years like he's 9 years old now no any poisonings chronic exposures for farmers um, they keep it in the house only um organo phosphorus poisoning but it will present with acute um, it, no, uh, it can present but it will be acute um, presentation with poisoning yeah it's a chronic exposure over a period of time affecting your neurological system acute is when you consume it mm -hmm. there are many uh, pesticides etc which slowly affect your neurological system isn't it neurology pediatrics 90% diagnosis is from history yeah yes ma'am okay so if your history is very good you will have less problems isn't it any abdominal pain he has uh, during these episodes whenever he had no ma'am why are you asking like the, uh, these questions of abdominal pain specifically uh, ma'am porphyria can also present like this but uh, with abdominal pain yeah okay so history has to include uh, very uh, focused uh, no histories okay exposure to this that year there is exposure of farmer etc keep that in mind and that will widen your uh, differential diagnosis which dr vishwanath sir has been asking you is it it not just autoimmune yes sir so many things you will get you know if you dig into it all right hmm? because any better, any better with neuropathy yeah um sir gold uh, gold can um it is present in ayurvedic davas um cause of cause sir uh, also a uh, lead, lead poisoning sir lead poisoning lead poisoning lead poisoning got it so jot down all these all the exam going students and others who are there this is what is required in the negative histories the negative histories are to rule out the specific etiologies especially with the family history environmental history lead pipes supplying the water etc all those things you will need it over here is there any affection of his cognition intelligence over the last four years no ma'am he is uh, he uh, talks to you he is intelligent because he was going to school and doing very well at school no? yes, so there is no mental uh, deterioration as such no ma'am okay all right any questions from the experts no then we can move no. forward yes yes a uh, summary 11 year boy born of third degree consanguineous marriage with recurrent episodes of loss of power with involvement of both proximal and distal muscles with sensory in involvement with complete recovery after first two episodes and residual para uh, plagia after third episode with bowel and bladder involvement and recent onset of blurring of vision and seizures with pressure ulcers is mostly a case of an acquired recurrent neurological disorder involving white and gray matter most likely etiology being autoimmune uh, probably demyelinating in nature okay general examination child is sitting comfortably with back support and both hands uh, and uh, supported with both hands and both lower limbs are in semi flexed position with externally rotated um, child is conscious alert and oriented to time place and person vitals uh, child is afebrile the pulse rate is 92 per minute measured in right radial artery regular in rhythm and normal volume peripheral pulses are well felt in all four limbs respiratory rate is 30 per minute thoracic abdominal and regular saturation was 100% on room air Uh, blood pressure was 118 by 68 millimeters of uh, mercury in right arm, uh, which is 58 to 90th percentile for this child. There is no palliatorious cyanosis, clubbing, or uh, lymphadenopathy. Head-to-toe examination: 
head shape and size is normal no dysmorphic features present hair is normal eyes normal a uh, fundus examination shows hyperemic disc with blurred margins which is suggestive of optic neuritis present in both eyes ears are normal spine is normal pressure ulcers are present in sacral area which is around 5 by 4 cm a uh, bilateral lateral malleolus bilateral lateral aspect of thigh with healthy granulation tissue at present a uh, genitals normal tanner stage 2 no neurocutaneous markers and teeth are normal anthropometry wise um, child length is 152 cm for expected of 143 cm which is between 75 to 90th percentile weight is 35 kg for expected of 36 kg which is around 50th percentile head circumference is 54 cm and uh, bmi is 15.5 which is uh, between 10 to uh, 25th percentile Uh, which shows uh, the child is underweight cns examination higher fun uh, function examination child is conscious oriented to time place and person speech is intact the second ria yes so ulcers which are there we uh, those can you describe like is there a differential for this now looking at those ulcers besides being pressure ulcers if you look at uh, the presentation of the child and the etiologies which we have discussed whenever you see non healing ulcers like this without specific treatment um ma'am diabetic um, ulcers can also be present but not uh, here like they also don't heal uh, mm -hmm. and uh, um no uh, i don't know ma'am Oh, no. Okay, we'll keep that as a suspense then. Think about ulcers which are there, pressure ulcers. Very rightly you said, but when you have ulcers like this and they are not healing, and you have a patchy involvement, uh, neurological which is there, sensory involvement. Hmm? You have to keep one infective pro thing in your mind. Okay. Okay. All right. Go ahead. a uh, higher function examination child is conscious oriented to time place and person speech is intact normal comprehension and repetition behavior is normal and memory is intact cranial nerve examination first nerve smell is normal second nerve light reflex direct and indirect is present a uh, visual acuity uh, only finger count at one foot is present for both eyes third fourth and sixth nerve normal eye movements no diplopia no tosses accommodation reflex is present in both eyes fifth nerve corneal reflex is present normal sensation over face and mastication is normal for seventh nerve no facial deviation no drooling of saliva normal wrink uh, wrinkling over forehead normal taste sensation on the anterior aspect of the tongue eighth nerve normal hearing ninth tenth and eleventh nerve uh, normal taste sensation on the posterior aspect of tongue uvula is central gag reflex is present Uh, swallowing normal and able to turn head on both sides. Twelfth uh, nerve, normal tongue movements without any deviation. Motor system examination. Uh, the gait of the child could not be assessed. Uh, posture: the child is sitting uh, with trunk supported on hands, both knees partially flexed and externally rotated. Bulk of the muscles, bilateral wasting on both lower limbs is visible. Uh, there is no gross discrepancy between. Uh, the bulk on both side a uh, tone of the child in upper uh, limbs tone on both side is normal but in lower limbs uh, the tone is reduced there is hypotonia on uh, both sides this is a video showing hypotonia um power examination for uh, shoulder joints uh, the power is 3 by 5 on both sides in all the joints and um, for elbow also um, mam it is between third to fourth for elbow on both sides the child is able to uh, raise the hand above the shoulder but against resistance he is not able to do it completely Uh, for lower limb power at hip joint knee joint and ankle joint it is 0 by 5 uh, power is completely absent for neck muscles uh, power is normal 
and for trunk power in the lower trunk is more affected and the child requires support to get up from the lying down position to sitting position uh superficial reflexes abdominal reflex plantar reflex thoracic reflex and anal reflexes all are absent for deep reflexes biceps triceps and supinator on both side is normal but knee and ankle reflexes are lost on both sides a uh, sensory system examination pain temperature touch vibration is absent from toes up to the nipples on both sides tactile uh, localization two point discrimination and cortical sensations could be tested on bilateral upper limb and upper back which was normal romberg sign could not be assessed this examination was done uh, with hot uh, water in tube and child was not able to uh, uh, like feel the temperature at the level of nipple he was able to tell that it is hot water examination was continued on the upper limb which was normal he was uh, able to appreciate that it was hot water uh, there are no cerebellar signs no meningeal signs and uh, bowel and bladder uh, no sensation of bladder fullness and the child is catheterized uh, other system examination per abdomen it was soft uh, no distension no organomegaly equilibrium was palpable in the left iliac fossa Uh, for cvs examination s1 s2 was heard there was no murmur and uh, for uh, respiratory system air entry was bilaterally equal with no added sounds uh, final diagnosis 11 no, year old from examination now where you want to localize um so uh, up to nipples uh sensations are absent for sensory uh, at t4 levels so uh and uh, below that the child is um, lower back motor system like weakness is more and uh, both lower limb weaknesses there so uh, if spinal cord involved spinal cord involvement is present sir at present also and most likely it is um, mid uh, thoracic uh, like no upper thoracic area sir for spinal cord so it is long segment involvement yes sir long segment long segment involvement is there a line specific like how you get it in a transverse myelitis do you think it is like that ma'am uh, for transverse myelitis we need a um, lower motor neuron type of uh, paralysis at that level of injury and uh, um, that Uh, in spinal cord and below that there will be upper motor neuron type of paralysis but in this condition uh, it is completely a reflexia is there so there is no upper motor uh, type kind of uh, paralysis it is less likely ma'am okay what about the eye involvement there is there any differential diagnosis for that optic neuritis you are talking about um ma'am demyelinating condition fits in this condition um, most um, most appropriately because uh, optic neuritis is present um, which is uh, which is seen in this condition demyelination which other conditions you get optic neuritis in neurological um, cases um ma'am it can be in infective uh, infective cause can be there uh then para infectious uh, causes like um, measles uh, it can be there um which infectious 
causes cause optic neuritis. Uh, Ma'am, syphilis, uh, we can get optic neuritis. Mm -hmm. HIV, uh, can we can also get uh, optic neuritis. And uh, Lyme's disease can also uh, have optic neuritis. Mm -hmm. so they are all have neurological involvement also, all these conditions which we Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so always keep infective in mind. Okay, you are at an advantage compared to us because you have investigated the case. So you know what the probable diagnosis is, but uh, for a person who is listening first time, we expect you to have all these. What is the tuberculous involvement of the eyes? In uh, which way the eye can be involved in tuberculosis? Um, Flick tell you, uh, tell you uh, Tenular conjunctivitis is present in tuberculosis in eyes. And something related to optochism. Mm -hmm. Optochismatic arachnoiditis is one condition where you get involvement of the eyes in case of tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. Can the uvia get involved somewhere? What is it called as uvia? Anterior uveitis. Uveitis, tuberculosis. It is very high in India. Only thing it is not diagnosed. And people will lose the eye. Okay. What happens to the optic when you look at a fundus in a patient of TB meningitis in stage one? What are the changes in the eyes, in the fundus? Mm -hmm. If intracranial pressure is raised, then uh, we will see papilloedema uh, with blurring of disc margins and uh, pale uh, disc is there. And, pale disc. and subsequently, if you don't diagnose it on time, what can happen? No treatment. Blind, no um, child blindness, uh, it can progress to blindness now. Optic atrophy. Okay, uh, so okay. it is something which is preventable. All right. Any other inputs from our experts? on her presentation, etc. cetera. Hold on, welcome. Dr. Raghavendra. Uh, presentation is nice, madam. Uh, so infection, as you already told, infection has to be kept first, but only thing point against infection, uh, which you should have mentioned is the patchy involvement and the recurrence. Uh, so they, those two points usually go against the infection. Uh, uh, that's it. Is there any other disease, you know, which is always kept as a differential diagnosis for any neurology case? Mitochondrial. Mitochondrial is one and the other one. In the, uh, you know, you asked somebody to look at the eyes and they checked the eyes also. So same neurology cases. What else is required in the eyes? It has, of course, some different presentation also, but in the eyes in neurology, we tend to forget it. No? You can see it in the eyes sometimes, otherwise you will refer to an ophthalmologist to see it specially. Mom, cataract so that you can see it also, yes. Yeah. Anteriorly. A glaucoma. Glaucoma ke aage. Baju mein. All neurology cases. Uh, uh, KF ring, ma'am. Oh, yes. Wilson's disease. In Wilson's, yes. though presentation may not be, but arthritis is known in uh, Wilson's and all possible, even vitamin D deficiency, spasticity, dystonia, handwriting issues, mm, cardiovascular problems, everything under the thing can happen in Wilson's. Yes, okay, so when you don't find a cause or it is unexplained hematological kidney problems, etc. So basic, you come back to that the eye examination, it's a mirror of neurology, skin and eyes. 
So don't uh, have this tendency to refer to ophthalmologist. You should know how to use an ophthalmoscope. Okay, because many things you will pick up yourself rather than the ophthalmologist. Okay. You have presented the examination part very well. Dr. Surya Kant is very quiet, but he has mentored you. And I can see some hints of Dr. Rajesh Kulkarni over here. Okay, this is how we used to make residents present the cases hmm, with videos put over there, etc. But Dr. Surya Kant has also helped you over there. Okay, so yes, ma'am. Dr. Rajesh Kulkarni, sir, was helped a lot. So that is a typical way, and I think uh, you all uh, benefit a lot if you do it like this. So every okay. neurology case is very scoring. You have two experts over here uh, who have gone through the fellowship and are now practicing as uh, uh, pediatric neurologists. So it's a very interesting branch, okay? Don't, don't rely on the investigations. Make a clinical diagnosis and justification. Isn't it? Shall we go ahead? Yeah. Final diagnosis, 11-year boy with previous relapsing and remitting episodes and now progressive motor and sensory loss in this episode with involvement of bowel and bladder and finding of optic neuritis and dense paraplegia with pressure ulcers is a case of demyelinating disorders, uh, most probably multiple sclerosis or neuromyelitis optica or ADEM. Okay. Again, if I ask you now again, which infection can present like this? Which is common infection, Rhea. Initially, sir, as Dr. Raghavendra, sir. Go back to Dr. Raghavendra again and again. Yes, sir. tuberculosis, isn't it? But Does it affect or not? Now you have to tell us why you think it is not. Ma'am, because um, over last four years, uh, the initial presentation was not of encephalopathy, like uh, no uh, tuberculosis meningitis, like kind of picture. Also, there's no history of uh, weight loss uh, initially, no history of uh, low-grade uh, fever, and presentation with a complete uh, recovery without medication of uh, uh, with tuberculosis, AKT, it is less likely that uh, it will be at uh, like this level. It will, um, it, over four years, it will progress a lot. It has progressed, no? But, um, progress. like, um, the child. Um, um, there was a tuberculoma there. Then Dr. Raghavendra sir gave anti edema measures, and the child was fine, went home, was all right, then comes back with paraplegia, and that is progressive. Total. Um, uh, patchy involvement involving uh, low, uh, spinal cord. Why spinal cord? There is something covering the cord no? where TB goes and sits. What is that? The spinal cord lies in what? Hmm. In vertebral column. Vertebral columns. So can TB go and sit in the vertebral columns and yes, have catchy involvement? Hmm. Can it involve the nerves, the spine, uh, spinal cord? If you have TB of the vertebra, it compresses the Compression. spine. Yes, mm -hmm. it can involve from tuberculoma to upper limb in the cervical spine, thoracic spine, lumbar spine, bladder bowel involvement, eyes involved. Mm -hmm. Can it be? Um, so when we were in Grand Medical College, we had Dr. Udani, Brajesh Udani sir's father. He could convince us that every patient in the pediatric ward etiology is tuberculosis. I presented a case of rheumatic heart disease. He convinced me after one hour that this is nothing but tuberculosis problem of the heart, including uh, everything, all parts affected. So just defend it. But that is one disease where if you have the spinal cord which is getting compressed and you think it is a spinal cord problem the etiology is in the vertebra and if you know the Walgren's calendar okay. of tuberculosis at what age in pediatric practice will the spine get involved vertebrae 
the age is around eight to nine years. Like there are two peaks. One peak is earlier, five, six years, and then the other one is around 10, 12, and then later on in there. So read a little bit about when to use it as a differential diagnosis. All this, what you have written here may be correct, okay? But for me, everything has to be ruled out with TB as one of the etiologies, okay? So another so, one would be HIV. HIV. So consider HIV. All these things are possible. HIV with or without TB, alone HIV itself, all your symptoms are possible. There is a myelitis which happens at a particular age onwards. Okay, all right. As, as uh, Madam rightly said, which are the points favoring to TB, Ria? You can start One from... Is in the initial day. history, you said there is a six-month treatment was given. Yes, sir. And also there is a non-healing ulcer. Mm. Also favoring. Yes, sir. There are TB ulcers, isn't it? If you look at the edges of that ulcer, and send it for histopathology, you will find it is teeming with TB bacilli. Okay. They are very typical ulcers uh, which are there. So I couldn't see it on the photograph, but uh, somebody must have given him TB treatment for six months. So it becomes partially treated, it becomes MDR, immunocompromised, and you have the word, see, you, you have to defend your DDs, okay? That's me. So out of the four, four examiners, one examiner is like me who finds TB everywhere. Okay, so mm -hmm. I expect justification from you for that. Okay, yes, Dr. Vishwanath, you're any, saying any, something. Any other mycobacteria, say, say tuberculosis, we have sensory involvement. And if the say, patient is from, say, Varda or that side, either. any other infection would like to understand. But not this much patchy involvement of the cord. Sensory involvement with trophic ulcers. Which area, Varda, Varda, which, which is common, Rhea? Mycobacterium, which? Dr. Veha? I don't know, sir. Lepre, na, lepre. Think about lepre. Achha, okay. Lepre. So all these things, uh, keep in mind, if you have not read it, go and read about it. We don't expect you to know everything, okay? You've done very well. Okay. So hey, and, one, one point I would like to submit, ma'am. Yeah. After my residency, Walgreens calendar, I asked many residents, but they don't know about the timeline of yeah. tuberculosis and its uh, you know uh, development. It's very important. So read Walgreens calendar. It will help you a lot when the primary complex happens, then when progressive primary lymph node disseminated miliary. The last one to get involved are the kidneys in pediatric age group. Mm -hmm. So that is what, uh, uh, it's there on the net and in the books also. So read uh, that. Okay, shall we go ahead? Yeah. We have another half an hour to go, so you can take your time. Um, investigation, uh, we have four MRI scans of this patient. First was done in 2019. Uh, where this report is only of spinal cord, uh, which shows um, hyper intense signals in C4 to C3 and uh, sorry, D3 and D9 to D10. And this is the MRI image that is available. You, you can tell us no, what is the one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth on the left hand side, what is it showing? The sixth on the first column. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that um, one. What yes, is it? Ma'am, uh, ma there is uh, on the left side of the uh, brain, uh, there is a well defined uh, lesion. Uh, multiple lesions. Mm. So what are they? Um, are they ring-enhancing shadows, yeah. multiple? 
So why is it not tuberculoma? Yes, ma'am. Why is it not neurocysticerca? There is lot of edema surrounding it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, it is possible, ma'am. The ring enhancing shadows, no? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the second MRI available, uh, which was done in 2021, uh, which shows uh, the previous lesions are resolved and there are two uh, hyper intense lesions in this image in the right side of the brain. They are large, um, involving the right basal ganglia and right posterior parietal lobe. Mm -hmm. Third MRI scan was uh, done in August 2022, which showed uh, um, hyperintense lesions in bilateral frontoparietal and left temporal lobes. Uh, there was enlargement in cervical cord and entire dorsal column. Can you show the uh, spinal cord? We are just saying. Uh, sir, spinal cord Wait. images uh, made no. other, sir. Okay. So these are looking like the fluffy lesions, you know. Yes, sir. Both of the hemispheres, there is change in time. So it is called DIT and DIS, dissemination over time and dissemination in space. That the uh, demyelinating those uh, regions, those have changed their positions, correct? Yes, sir. Depending upon your MRIs. And yes, sir. You be able to say whether this is axial, whether this is coronal, or whether this is sagittal, whether this is T1 weighted image, T2 weighted image, or flare image. Simple. So nothing more is expected from it. But what, what kind of section is this? Axial? So this is axial section. Axial, sure. Yes, sir. And whether uh, this is T1 axial, T2 or... uh, This one is T2 image, sir. Always T2. remember, in T2, the CSF is bright. Mm -hmm. In T2, CSF is bright. In T1, the CSF is black. Yeah. Correct? So whether this is a T1 Great. or this is flare. But this is T2. No, this is flare, flare image. This it is flare. Flare. It is flare. Okay, T2, okay, I told you where the CSF is bright, it is T2. Okay. T2 flare. This is called flare. Where you are attenuating the signal by your CSF, it is, you are making it again black. So the rest of the edema you can see very properly. So that is due to the flare. Correct? So these are round, fluffy image uh, lesions in both of the Hemispheres. Yes, sir. Okay. What about the last row? Last row, first two. What are those uh, ring shadows? Just below that, yeah. The first and the the first, yeah, that one, yeah. Um. I'm like it could be um, like neurocysticercosis, um, but um, because they have been there since 2019. Those shadows, multiple shadows are there, ring enhancing with other things also, which you get. There is some atrophy also, which has started happening in the frontal areas, mm -hmm. but the ventricular system is not enlarged. So the last one you are seeing the diffusion restriction images. Okay, diffusion. See the diffusion. Okay, last so what one. is the importance of diffusion? You find the acute edema in the diffusion restriction, whether there is diffusion restriction or not. Now, in case of say demyelinating pathology also, you may or you may not get diffusion restriction. In diffusion restriction is most important in cases of strokes. And you have to correlate those diffusion weighted images with the ADC images. Whether those look which on bright on DWI, that is the diffusion images, they should look hypo intense, that is black on the ADC. So that's how you correlate and you, you know, uh, think different, different etiologies in CNS. Now here as ma'am correctly told, so whether there is any, let's say uh, you said it is NCC, now, what are the points against NCC neurocysticercosis? There are so, always remember four points, you know, the size of the lesion. So less than 20 mm, more than 20 mm. Number one, what is the age? It is well circumcised. The shaggy margins you'll find in tuberculosis. While it is quite well maintained. Size, so, then uh, smooth margins. Those are more supratentorial or infratentorial? 
sir optic uh, there is no information on optic nerve in any of the mri uh, spinal cord in uh, every mri it is given that there is some thickening of the cord and uh, initially it was uh, in the upper and thoracic uh, region but uh, now it is involving like long segments as uh, long segment demyelination of cervical cord and so do not read do not read reports do not read reports the pediatric trainee should not read reports he should try to analyze what i am finding you are getting mri films in your hands you try to look where are the optic nerves whether optic nerve is looking swollen what is that periventricular region whether i am finding anything in the i told something about dense hemiplegia now where is my internal capsule how it is looking like So always, always see films. Always see ECG. Always see EEG. Do not see a report. That's how you develop yourself as a you know master of all. Yes, sir. So what is cerebellum? It looks normal. Can you show cerebellum? Can you show me the uh, you know where is the pons? Where is the middle cerebral peduncle? Middle cerebellar peduncle. Um. Sir, this is the cerebellum. Correct. Um. Uh, sir, this is a like part of brain stem, sir. Yeah. But brain pons. Now you are having MRI with your hand in neural anatomy. Now look, this is mustache-like structure, which you can see the the next one, that distant one, which is you know, yeah, that that is the middle cerebellar peduncle. It is very important. Okay. Correct. Then go here, see the midbrain and your pons. Okay, this is your midbrain. What we will see in midbrain? Say you talked about neuromyelitis optica. Now I am very much interested. I want to show one structure in the midbrain. Where is the midbrain? Show me midbrain. It is the third third row, first image. third row first image third row yeah 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 that structure in the center what you are pointing at with the arrow is a midbrain correct where is the tip of the midbrain uh, where is the tip where where is the tip of the arrow you kept uh, what what is that structure upside um, what is this structure in the midbrain and why it is important sir uh, area cross tema or prostenium So this one is the aqueduct, aqueduct, aqueduct of Sirius, and the periaqueductal region. If you are finding bright enough, think about anemone. Oh, okay. correct. 
Now, what, what I learned from the MRI, what I want to know, whether those lesions are there in the periventricular lesion, whether those lesions are changing over the period of time, whether there is associated brightening or hyperintensity in the periaqueductal region, whether there is cord involvement. So now in the pediatric case group, just don't go for the myelination. Now the spectrum is very big and the spectrum is called MOGAD. Yes, sir. Correct? Mog associated demyelinating disorders. Mm -hmm. Now, which are those disorders? Your Adam comes in that, your optic neuritis come in that, your transverse myelitis come in that. Correct? Yes, Neuromyelitis optica and Mog associated encephalitis. Now, do you think this is a uh, child is having recurrent kind of uh, lesions and you always thought that five injection weekly? What could have those injections? Uh, sir, uh... It could be, uh, uh, sir, any immunomodulator, sir, like um, um, uh, it could be uh, rituximab, sir, a monoclonal antibody and um, or a methotrexate. Uh, these drugs are given weekly. So, so in acute, acute condition, most common, methyl penicillin is the only drug which works. No, she one, one injection per week, five cycles uh, uh, oh. in five weeks. Um, methyl prednisolone, sir, we give um, for a, such acute condition, we give daily um, so pulse therapy. But uh, this is per week. So, mostly. Per week. So, what are the same? Uh, now, okay. Uh, clinical run, whether this is demyelinating. It is TB. Ah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> so we I just know. want to ask you one question. Ah. If there is the first 2019 scan is showing you very clear ring enhancing shadows which are there. Uh, suppose nobody treats it. Okay, it spreads. Like mm -hmm. for that, you should know the TB pathogenesis. Okay, these if this X-ray is shown to somebody at that stage, these are tuberculomas, multiple of them. And how treatment modifies the course of an infective etiology? You give them IVIG, you give them methylprednisolone. What will happen? They will feel better. And there is something like TB iris. Mm -hmm. What is TB iris? You know, HIV ka iris, you know, but there is something called TB iris also. And then you will be all right for a, a year or so and it comes back again with like, I would have liked to look at the whole of the spine, the vertebral columns, etc. all that. Because if I am shown this X-ray with immunoglobulins and methylprednisolone being given at multiple places, we don't have the details. But uh, you will be asked about uh, TB iris in this case. You will also be asked why this patient is not responding and progressing. The myelitis part can happen with the drugs. It can happen with the disease that has been modified. So the etiology of this one part is genetics, which Dr. Vishwanath is telling you about all these uh, different, different conditions which are there. But always keep in mind that what medicines do to the, it will not classically behave like tuberculous etiology. It will come with sequelae. Demyelination is known with uh, infective etiologies like tuberculosis. You can uh, do the whole workup screening, MANTU test, uh, gastric aspirates, or any biopsies if you are possible to get it done. At the same uh, time, what we need to keep in mind in such patients is that there is a tre preventable or treatable etiology. For the rest, again, you will end up giving steroids and IVIG and all these things. It will alter the course of the disease. Do the CD4 counts, very basic HIV, CD4 counts. In TB iris, same thing happens. Okay, and there are many case reports of uh, recurrent uh, paralysis, which are there in the literature where ultimately after many years, they found it was nothing but TB of the cervical spine, thoracolumbar, and because of these disease-modifying immunomodulators, the infection was suppressed. 
and over a period of time uh, as the cd4 counts goes down counts go up so we still need to know our basics correct okay do the screening of the family members uh, look at other people who are in the household uh, this child has been through this illness for four years he may have been in out of hospital contracted tb over there not necessary in the home or anything so all those other possibilities for demyelination etc all those i do agree as differential diagnosis but if you have not worked for tb and if is it possible dr surya khan to just have a look at the entire spine yes, what is the dr vishwana yes. had asked for it no that spine looking at the spine would be really uh, beneficial in this case you know look for any pure such uh, uh, lesions uh, granulomatous lesions in the uh, vertebral column which are compressing and causing these etiologies and we are going after more of demyelination because that is post infectious and post infection both can cause demyelination yes ma'am sure. they are the etiology for uh, such things so keep that in mind Okay, yes, we are not saying yes, you are wrong in your approach, but have you screened the patient for TB? No, no, madam. No, ma'am. Yeah, do it then. Okay, yes, that is sure. Doctor Vishwanath has told you what investigations you can do. So if it mm. is affordability, which is a problem, see which one I would choose ruling out TB first. Yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Yeah, because that is in our hand, and somebody gave six months treatment along with uh, uh, immunoglobulin and steroid, and uh, it flares up again, and it comes back with more dissemination. Again, somebody uses steroids, immunomodulator, child feels better. Again, you will have flare ups which are there. Make opinion for the ulcer. Uh, also, if somebody can do a skin biopsy just next adjacent to the edges of the Also, it will work. Uh, that will also do. Yes, ma'am. I will do it. But these three images, now what you corrected to, they really look very suspicious. Not looking like you know. Uh, this is TB factor demyelination. This this is not the previous one. The previous. This is TB factor demyelination. What you uh, just now showed. But the bam, uh, she was telling about one, two, three, the six images, the multiple ring enhancing lesions, and you. Know, You are supposed to. Uh, you cannot end your case without keeping TB as your differential diagnosis. You have to keep anyhow, and you have to, as ma'am uh, showed a fantastic approach. How you are supposed to go and you know uh, TB IDs, very nice. Yes. What what else? Say apart from say TB uh, screening, and you do uh, did all the investigations. What else? Now, uh, okay, uh, consider this is demyelination. What investigations would you like to say? in this shape uh sir three antibodies which are um, important are uh, mog antibodies sir and uh, aquaporin 4 um, antibodies and um, oligoclonal bands oligoclonal bands and always remember oligoclonal bands you are supposed to send in csf and yes, serum yes. correct and they just give you idea whether you are dealing with inflammation or not inflammatory pathology so that is very important getting oligoclonal bands now this mog related encephalitis which is you know recently we you know very uh, we think about mog mogad they generally do you know uh, and those mog related optic neuritis they budge to the treatment very well uh, yes dr swami what do you say so if you are giving uh, IV methyl prednisolone, IV IG. You are giving rituximab, but this child is continuously becoming critical and critical. The, the every uh, episode is worse than the prior one. So you have to consider, as Kinnegar Ma'am told you, you have to consider TB as your one of the very important differential for this child. So in initial episode, whatever left hemi process was there, we will take it as a clinically isolated syndrome first episode. And with methyl prednisolone, the pay, probably five days that must be have been the methyl prednisolone only pulse therapy. There was a wonderful response. So usually, whatever we have seen is the all these immune mediated conditions are having good good response to pulse therapy. 
pulse therapy but uh, in your case it is not so uh, see residues residual uh, this one can be there residual weakness can be there but usually acutely they will have a very good response with methylprednisolone whatever rituximab everything we use cannot be used for a initial control they are only for preventing the relapses yes. So CSF study was done any time in this patient? Ah, uh, sir. Uh, according to history, they have done CSF examination three times, but no reports are available. Um, sir, uh, NMO aquaporin four antibodies and Mog antibody report uh, is negative. It was um, like available, but CSF is not there. Okay. See, elongated transverse myelitis, long long segment transverse myelitis, and optic neuritis. Uh, if you if your differential diagnosis apart from TD, well, obviously we have ruled out tuberculosis then neuromyelitis optica is uh, one of the most important common differential diagnosis okay after that so any acute event has to be treated with methylprednisolone only what was the reason for the child uh, deteriorating and uh, had to be put on ventilatory support and comes out of it. So what was the reason for that? Uh, sir, uh, ma'am, actually this child was uh, admitted under surgery department for ulcers. He was not uh, admitted in our department directly, uh, but suddenly one day he started having convulsions. So that convulsions were not uh, responding to any anti-epileptics. Uh, like so after, even after one hour he was having convulsions, so the child was intubated. And uh, later, when he regained consciousness, then after four days, he was extubated and uh, then he was taken transfer in our uh, department. Okay. So the, the, that is, could be uh, an acquired infection also. Yes. It might be, so it, uh, the reason for intubation was the convulsions and the anticonvulsions given. Is it prophylactically the child was intubated or uh, uh, status During epilepsy? Status state status okay. you have spent money on doing all these antibodies do a cbnat and manto yes, test sir. and esr yes okay do yes, that x-ray this, this test was done previously only madam we have not done it was done in uh, when the patient was admitted in dr okay all this has gone there yes, see sir. i don't deny your diagnosis of demyelination etc all those but uh, etiology wise basic, the child's progression has been such uh, that the uh, immune modulators, steroids, everything has changed the course and the disease in this child. And you won't be surprised if you will get markers of TB positive. You treat that and the child would be all right then. And now you have to keep in mind MDR TB. Yes, Okay, because at six months, somebody has given some treatment. I'm not sure whether it was TB, which AKT, which was it, or it was something else. Um, so, uh, for, on documentation, uh, they have given prednisolone for this child for six months, but uh, they have not taken that also. They were just prescribed, but they have not taken anything. Nothing. Okay, because steroids for six months will suppress your tuberculosis. When you stop it, it will flare up. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and all these changes are known. And there are many diseases which are arthritis related, granulomatous disease. Can you name some where they can affect uh, all these spine, muscles, all the other organs, etc.? Oh, Ma'am, sarcoidosis can affect. Yes, um... yeah, very true. Okay, there are skin manifestations in sarcoidosis which will give rise to such non healing ulcers also. Okay, so never forget sarcoidosis. Like basic, a first in India, rule out infections, then go for the effects of the infections. You see, the oligoclonal bands are going to tell you only inflammation, which is known with any infective TB or other diseases also. All right, so go for uh, something where uh, first the 2019 uh, X-ray, uh, CT, MRI was shown, then the diagnosis should have been multiple tuberculosis. And straight away, the child should have been put on anti-TB drugs that time. Probably everything would have been a different picture altogether. Yes, okay. 
All right. Any other inputs? Uh, are there any uh, questions in the chat box? I don't see it over here. But if uh, there are any questions, we can take it uh, over here. Sneha? Is Sneha here? Okay, because we are coming to the end of our session. Uh, um, uh, if, if, I got the um, hello. Photos of the I am hello. Ma'am, I'm okay. continuous checking the our uh, live session uh, okay. page. Okay. So, the, ma'am, there is still now no question. No question. Okay. Yes. Right. Fine. Um, ma'am, I have uh, the images of the spine. Um, uh, I'll sh uh, should I share? Yes. Yes. If you can uh, share just it. Two minutes, ma'am. Yeah. You will have to stop sharing your previous uh, this thing and. Uh, Show us the other one on your desktop. Yes, ma'am. You can stop sharing this one. Uh, till that, till that, I I have a doubt, Doctor Vishnu sir. Is there any uh, change in treatment between MS and NMO, or is the MS treatment will cause harm if NMO is there? No, no, no. Definitely, these demyelinating disorders likely to go into, say, MS. Now, this age group is also very, uh, you know, we generally do not see a child with MS at 10, 9, 10, 11 years. That is, say, from adolescence, you start coming across with the MS children and then you use the criteria and you, you know, MS is very chronic. It is uh, relapsing, remitting, onset. NMO, mock, these are very they budge to the treatment steroid and to IVH. but then uh, ms you have to be on long long term management in your life like uh, diabetes so what is the approach what is the take home message from this particular case do not forget tuberculosis as your differential in any of the cases that is very important sir uh... Octochiasmatic arachnoiditis, if there is visual uh, dysfunction, think about octochiasmatic uh, arachnoiditis, UVITs, and getting proper MRI done uh, in the sequence. Say, I want optic cuts, I want uh, this one. Yeah. So now, what you can see over here, can you zoom it? The cord? 2021. Above one, above one, this is not your meaning. Sir, I have two more images. Yeah, just a minute, just a minute. So here if you can see what different bodies are looking all fine. The core. The no. last the last one, cervical spine. The last, fourth one, right side, right side. What about the cervical spine that is taken as normal? There is a lesion there. You all are expert at, at interpreting them. So maybe you could share it with them and get the, get the reading done by a, a clinician rather than the radiologist. Yes. Because you know the case, isn't it? Even the cord is... Uh, Dr. Swami, can you see any hyperintensity in the cord? Sir, no, not exactly, sir. I'm not able to appreciate that one. Appreciate, not able to appreciate, yeah. Yeah, you can show this here. If you look at the vertical session, sections of the lung fields, what do you see by the hilum, bilateral hilum? What are all those shadows which are there? Bilateral. Num lymph nodes. Yeah, there could be lymph nodes. Now where you are putting that pointer, 
multiple uh, para high yeah i think you should at least rule out those things you have some more uh, films no ma'am these are the available films the previous one was showing some hyper intense you know uh, core signal the previous one yeah i'll show you yeah just zoom it zoom it yeah 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 now here here you can see little hyper intense this one yeah the central one it is some hyper intense signal in the cord quite long segment more than 3 segment this is a hyper uh, hyper intense signal so those are like uh, for your demyelinating disorders you see this yes ma'am yes yes, yes ma'am the vertebral columns look uh, okay to me actually but uh, i'm not an expert in that uh, somebody has uh, put here a question why didn't the child present initially with seizures with such big perilegional uh, sorry perilegional uh, edema in case of tuberculosis dr sabat Ahmed has asked that question. You want to answer? The child is having cortical. Now look, this particular where is the involvement is the most important. When the cortex is involved, you are likely to get uh, seizures. Correct. So any say uh, granuloma or whether it is demyelinating lesion, which is at cortical and subcortical junction. it is going to irritate the cortex and the child will be you know through a seizure it is where is the lesion situated even if you are having a bigger say lesion in the white matter you may not get a fit you may not get a seizure so the cortex is the culprit when you are thinking about the seizure uh, ma'am should i stop sharing yeah you stop sharing and then we can just congratulate you for uh, doing a very good presentation dr surya kant and your entire team at ycm i think so you all have taken great efforts to present uh, present this case and also our two experts have uh, given a valuable inputs you may or may not take my suggestion but uh, i would you send me the reports of mantu test Uh, as well as if there are any lymph nodes in the cervical region go for the biopsy skin biopsy if it is possible to do it and a cb nat gastric aspirate screen the family also okay and get the ct scan reported by uh, clinicians like you can share it with dr vishwanath so the actual films actually and discuss with uh, them but this is a exam case which comes for md dnb and basically what you have to do is how you are approaching the things based on the symptomatology so there are few things which in a very systematic manner for a neurology case you have to find out at the end of the history you should know whether it's a progressive disorder or not in the beginning only so your history has to give you that clue if you want to know weakness the weakness is because of what then uh, which i didn't find in your histories is there a diurnal variation now this child's whole progress was different you know three episodes are there and it is like a progression so whenever you get a first time you get a case of weakness always mention if there is a diurnal variation whether it's related to some exertion exercise or related to temperature changes like with cold sometimes you get the changes is it with or without pain are the bowel bladders involved which you mention and there are typical bulbar involvement like if you have a paraparesis which is moving like gbs then you may be asked that what are the bulbar symptoms in history which you will so they are very typical like you like this is in the same language as the parents or caretaker so any double vision is there any change in voice is there a problem in chewing or in uh, swallowing is there some breathing difficulty so if these four or five symptoms are asked usually they are a pointer to the 
bulb involvement and you want to know what is happening to the encephalon. So always ask about the scholastic performance, cognition, intelligence, has it deteriorated? And then you want to know whether this is a sequelae of a problem which happened at birth. So birth history becomes very important, uh, especially with any insults that had happened there or any genetic disorders which are there in the family where weakness becomes uh, recurrent. Because we didn't touch there, but if you have a periodic paralysis, familial periodic paralysis, it is genetic and related to your potassium uh, changes. And they are always precipitated by infections, stress, etc. So if it is where everything else is normal, the mentation, everything normal, and the recovery is there as soon as you collect, correct the electrolytes, they become normal, okay? Though it was not applicable over here because this child's disease progress was totally different. And always make a point that weakness, you need to talk about three organs uh, always. One is the joints. You After all this, you might find that there is a problem in the joints and you are doing a whole lot of uh, tests. So that is one. The other one is kidney and the other one is skin. So very specifically mention about these three uh, organs uh, which are there. There are systemic illnesses which cause recurrent uh, sort of weaknesses, which one you said acute intermittent porphyrias. So if you want to make a diagnosis without spending much money, if that is your DD, just collect one bulb of urine and forget it on the window seal of the ward. Okay, next day you will come and see it is red in color. So without any money spent, you will have at least a diagnosis. It changes the color which is there. And always important is your history. Where are they coming from? Farmers, toxins, the diet they are consuming. So all this exposure to toxins and uh, zoonotic diseases. Okay, there is something called a stick paralysis. So those bites, where are they coming from? from which part of the state they are coming. So all these regional diseases which are there, the, whenever there is an exposure, you will get weakness. The exposure goes away or you give an antidote, the child will be all right. Okay, botulin toxin is something else where again you will get these type of descending paralysis and weakness and they get better on their own. So in the history, go into the details of the diet and any vaccinations which are given. Did this child have COVID vaccination given? Does he fall into that age group? I don't think no, so. No. He was just eight no, or nine no. years old, I think yeah. so. Otherwise, mm -hmm. that is one of the problems which you can get where vaccines are given. MR campaign was going on. We have had uh, patients who behaved like uh, paralysis or GBS post-vaccination, but we could never prove it. Okay, so that is uh, the things uh, which you keep in mind. And we didn't ask you, but here the bladder and bowel was involved. So I'll ask all uh, residents to write just three or four lines about what is the innovation uh, uh, of the uh, bowel, the sensory segments, uh, the nerve supply and all, and the functions, like when do you get different type of bladders, okay, paralytic, non-paralytic, all those things uh, which are there, they are always asked in such cases in exam, tell us the innovation of the uh, bladder or the bowel and why there is constipation, why there is a catheter being put, complications of catheter. So all those uh, things are there. And Dr. Rajat has asked one question, tuberculoma present with lesions disseminated in space and time. So one of the reasons, uh, yeah, so th there were many disease modifying treatment given. You know, they can uh, suppress the normal course of uh, pathogenesis of TB. So you will get it at different places. It is just spreading. Okay, and that is why it remains a differential to your uh, demyelinating disorders. The only thing is uh, for demyelination to be present at eight years of age and progressing, uh, it, 
for me, I, I haven't seen it very often, though it does occur. It's not that it doesn't occur, uh, but uh, I, I think it may be the uh, this thing tuberculoma starting going into dissemination uh, post the IVIG or the methylprednisolone, which was there. Whenever we want to sort of make uh, any treatment with steroids or we want to treat somebody with IVIG, I always uh, try to rule out tuberculosis and HIV first. We have had it in many neurology cases in the past that uh, enthusiastically uh, steroids were started and then the patient comes up with uh, disseminated TB to us. Okay, I hope I have answered it, but if there is any particular uh, inputs from you, Dr. Rajat, you can put it in the chat box. We are all here to learn from each other. So I think uh, we will wind up over here. If any inputs from the experts or Dr. Surya Kant, uh, you want to add anything, otherwise we will close the session. Thank you very much, madam, for your valuable inputs. I remember one famous quote from your word, madam. You will be 90% right if you think common diseases. Yes. But only 10% for uncommon. So thank you for suggesting a lot of good inputs. Like we should, we should think a TB first. We are not think about that. It's it's not wrong, okay? Because uh, medicine is going so fast forward that uh, you think like diagnosing the 10% which is rare. Okay, and we have to eliminate TB by 2025. Yes, oh, we will be given another five years uh, up to 2030. So each and every case in the ward, if you think of it and at least rule it out, because now we have the ITP prophylaxis also. Right? If you have a, a child who is exposed to it, but not having the disease, you can put the patient on the, as per the guidelines of CDC, they are uh, eligible for the INH prophylaxis. And there is also the rifapentine INH prophylaxis, which will also come. There are research projects going on in Sasun BJ Medical College. The results will be out very soon. So it might change the guidelines, you know. So think about it. All right. Okay. So Thank I will Thank hand, you, madam. Yeah, I'll hand over to Dr. Nehal and then we can wind up. Nehal. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, today's session actually gave a very uh, interesting turn. And uh, <laughs> that was all because of the discussion. That is what we learn every time when we discuss the case. And that is the beauty of case discussion. I thank uh, both the experts, Dr. Vishwanathan, Dr. Raghavindra sir, and uh, uh, also Dr. Surekan sir for uh, getting the student to be a confident in presenting and uh, preparing them to uh, pre face a larger population on the screen. That is also a very big challenge. I thank Arti ma'am for beautifully moderating the session and uh, giving few small, small tips to the uh, case discussion. Thank you all. Thank Clar I'm thanking Clarinet also to provide this platform for the e -Gurukul. Thank you so much, everybody. And thank you, the presenter, who thank has you. taken such a point and really so confident uh, what whatever we are guiding, but she has uh, studied a lot, even about the demyelinating disorder. And I hope that she learned many things from today's discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you so everybody. much, everyone. Thank you. Had a wonderful session today. Hope we will uh, meet again in this platform. Thank you so much to all. Thank you, Sneha. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Nasdar. Thank you, Raghavendra, sir. Thank Bye. you, sir. Uh, ma'am, can I end this session? Yes, please. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night.